experience online and uh, this is for you to guys have a good time here with us. I would like to say welcome to our new members, our new welcome. Some of you are my friends. Uh, feel very welcome to uh, introduce yourself. I can see Kelly here. Pablo is new, is my friend. I can see Sandra here too. I have some other new welcomes. Barbara, I don't know if you're there. Fran, Mariana, Terry, Jinda, and Valerie, and Ricardo, if any one of you are there. And if you want to quickly introduce yourself, say your name and where you come from. Kelly, would you like to be the first? Your tour guide, you have to. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning here in Rio. I'm Kelly Tavares. I'm tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. And I'm a part of a network of other guides where I also met Sayuri. And we work with uh, cultural heritage tours here in, in Brazil with different settings and backgrounds. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you for inviting. And I look forward for, for more. What can you do with a fridge? Yes, good. <laughs> so anyone else would like to introduce yourself? Paul would like just to say hi from England so we can see, we can listen to a beautiful accent. <laughs> um, okay, then, then I have to. Uh, hello, uh, my name's Paul. Uh, greetings from England. Um, I hope you're having a nice day. Thank you. So anyone else? Sandra, Linda, Linda Key, if you want to unmute yourself and just, if you don't want, it's fine, okay? We just give you a, a warm welcome if you want to introduce yourself. It's really up to you. If you don't want to speak, you can just put in the chat uh, where you come from so we know where you come from. I think Naya, he's new first time to our group. Uh, Naya, I know you from, uh, I think, a virtual experience on uh, Airbnb, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you, uh, you and I, Sayuri, you and I were together uh, with uh, Giuliano's, uh, uh, I guess, uh, experience. Yes. And I attended yes, Minji's that's also. That's how I got introduced to this group. Thank you, Minji, and all of you. Yeah. Looking <laughs> forward to, yeah, I'm just a, uh, one of, uh, just like all of you love traveling and I can't do much. So this is the next best thing I can do right now. So I'm calling from <laughs> New Jersey, uh, calling from New Jersey. And I have done many of the Airbnb experiences and now I'm taking it forward and sort of connecting uh, with more people even. That's really good. So anyone else want to introduce yourself? No? Okay. Uh, okay. Feel free, you know, whenever you want to chat, just to explain you a little bit, I'm going to give you a little introduction of our fridge journey to Japan. Uh, I know everyone is very very excited because I know everyone's very excited with food and everyone is very excited with Japanese food more than anything you know people get very so we will have time for a little discussion after the quiz but at any time I'm going to be checking the chat if you want to say something in the chat feel free welcome if you're very excited if you want to yum it and ask something it's also fine you know, uh, um, we try to do it as relaxed as possible, as welcoming as possible. It's Sunday, it's our first time here on Sunday. So I'm very happy to welcome you guys on a Sunday session of our quiz, okay? Uh, I'm just going to introduce quickly, hi, Juliana, Juliana is here. So I'm just going to introduce you, Hawaii is me from Brazil and Sumil in Japan doing this. We are exactly 12 hours away. So it's exactly 10 a.m. here in Brazil and it's exactly 10 p.m. in Japan. So if you were with me, we would be having breakfast. If you were with Sumil, you probably would have been having like your last supper and saying good night to her. But we are connected. Um, she is from Kobe and my family is half Japanese and my grandparents, both grandparents, uh, they last city that they were in Japan was Kobe. So all the Japanese that came from Brazil during the beginning of the 20th century, of course not now, but in the beginning of the 20th century, they would go to Kobe. They have a center in Kobe where they would get prepared to come to Brazil, like little lessons, you know, um, disease, you know, what kind of a disease they would find here. So although we are very far away, I feel very connected with Samili. I would just like to share you just quickly a picture of my family. So my Japanese family. <laughs> so can you all see this? Yes. yes. Okay. Can you all see? Yes. Yes. So this is Kasato Maru. That was the first ship that brought Japanese to Brazil, 1908. That's when they first came. On the left is my family. With this arrow, here's my little daddy, <laughs> my father. 
my grandfather, he came by himself. So I still have family in Japan. I have some aunts in Japan, in Osaka. And this is my grandmother. You know, my grandparents passed away. My grandfather also passed away in 2011. And here are some pictures of um, um, families in Japan, oh, in Brazil. When they came here, they mainly came here to work in farms. Okay, those people I don't know, I just Google them, but just to show you how was life in Brazil when Japanese came here. This is my father and my grandmama getting married. My father was a hippie. He had the long hair and he had a Jeep. <laughs> and he met my mom in Bahia and decided to stay here. He was saving money to go to Europe, you know, to backpack in Europe. And he met mama and he gave up. I'm saying thank you for them for doing that. So I'm here with you. And that's my brother's. And my father and my mother, we were celebrating uh, their 25th anniversary of wedding. They didn't want to party, so we traveled. We did a road trip together. So that was our last trip together. And this I'm showing you, those are my relatives that I have in Japan, in Osaka. I went to Japan last year for two months, and I finally met my Japanese family. That's why I got obsessed with Japanese. I went to learn Japanese to be talking with them. They are cousins of my grandfather. And they gave me this beautiful present. It's my family Japanese tree. Wow. Okay. So this arrow here, those are my, this is Moriyu, it's my grandfather. Those are the family of my grandfather. And those are the people that are still in Japan and that are still alive. Everything that is in red are people that are still alive. <laughs> okay, okay. So I can, yeah, I can meet. So now let's talk about fridge, okay? Let's talk about things. What do you think is there, are those pictures? Can anyone unmute themselves and guess what are those? Oh, uh, can we can we chat? Type in the chat box. You can chat or you can unmute yourself. What do you think are those? I did a really research about fridge. Can anyone guess? Anyone okay. who is very fashion and guess what are those? I would say fridges. <laughs> yeah, you're Italian. You're Italian. You know it. <laughs> so those are brandy. That's a very, very uh, expensive brandy of. Um, uh, it's the most expensive fridge. That's what I researched. Uh, so and so Hamid brand says it's a spaceship fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let's compare. Okay, the most expensive fridge online, at least I Google it. I'm not sure if it is or not. And this was on the right, the first General Electric fridge, 1920s. We had the first fridge, and this is a merchandise about the fridge. Now let's do our first quiz, it's very quickly. I just want you, you can chat, you know, what would be the price of this expensive fridge? The first fridge of GE, you know, General Electric costs around 500 US, between 400 and 500. How much costs this fridge here on the right? 40,500 US, 4,500 US, 500 US if you Google on eBay, maybe you find one for 500 US, or you cannot afford it. What do you think? A, B, C, or D? You can put in the chat. I say B, I say D, I say A. Okay, B, B, B. I have to say that I only have, Juliana says it's too much. Julian, you are wrong. That's an Italian fridge that costs 40,000 US dollars. But it is. It's Italian. We are in the wrong country. You should go back to Italy and afford that. And, and sell fridges. I should go back to Italy and work <laughs> But it's like a spaceship. It's not on a fridge. It's just a spaceship, you know? It has a steam, a coffee making area, an ice machine, multifunction thing. So it's like a spaceship. So I introduce you the most expensive fridge in the world, okay? But now let's go where we are heading to. We are heading to Japan. And my experience in two months in Japan was very special because I was with families. I did work away in Japan. So I could stay um, like around 20 days with Japanese families. And I got very surprised about their fridge. It's totally the opposite, okay? You're going to see about me about with Sumili. Uh, one of the ways to have an experience in Japan is actually to visit the Japanese fridge. And I'm sure you're going to be amazed at how simple life can be, how healthy life can be, and how we should follow some very simple steps on life to live well. With this pandemic, I think we are learning to be in our houses. 
And to be in our house means to live well and healthy, friendly atmosphere. That's why I'm here with you on my Sunday morning, spending my time with you because I think that's very important. So now I give the hands to Sumili directly from Kobe. She's going to show us our fridge. And this in my back is the first fridge of General Electric. Let's see how Japan fridge is. Mm -hmm. Sumili, yeah. So, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much for joining so this experience. So, I'm very really happy to, you know, share a lot of ideas with Sayuri. And uh, actually, yeah, so it's amazing. So, this is our only one beautiful group. And I am here in Kobe. Kobe is the middle part of Japan, just the northeast part of Pacific Ocean. And just after Sayuri, they were in just opposite here. So Brazil. So so Sayuri now 10 a.m. Good morning, Ohio. And uh, me, so in Japan it's 10 p.m. Yeah, Konbanwa, it's good evening. It's totally different. But uh, we still have uh, connecting and uh, so so Sayuri is a sad Japanese Brazilian, so we have the same food culture. So it's very, really, very really amazing, I think. So I'm very really happy to share about it for with everyone. Yeah. And uh, actually, so can I introduce myself a little bit? Uh, actually, I used to work in Japanese tourist company as a tour leader for the, about 10 years. And actually, then uh, after marriage, I have two kids now. So it's quite difficult to go overseas. So from three years ago, I just started, uh, you know, uh, Kobe to, uh, local tour guide for international tourists. And uh, I, I really enjoyed this uh, job too, but in 2020, so from around the middle of March, so everything changed so quickly. And uh, I was so disappointed. Oh my God, it's just finished to connect with international people. But the, uh, after I met this pub quiz show and I met, after I met Minji, so uh, I'm really happy because I really feel connecting with uh, all over the world. So thank you so much. Okay, so now I'd like to share some screens. So just a moment, please. Yeah, yeah. So this is so my uh, family. So uh, this is so ryokan. Ryokan means typical Japanese traditional hotel. And uh, at ryokan, we have a free pajama like this. So kimono styled pajama. And uh, so uh, if you have a chance to come visit Japan, I highly recommend you to stay in ryokan. Yeah, so Japanese styled hotel. And uh, you, you can uh, enjoy this kind of free pajama. But to be careful, hang on, I can, no, I can use pointer. So, so always, so you have to put it, so left hand side on the top, because if you wear the yukata, so uh, right hand side top, it's opposite, that means ghost in Japan. So just remember, always left side on top, okay? Yeah, and uh, okay, so now, so, after sharing the screen, I'd like to invite you to my small kitchen and I'd like to show my fridge. So before that, just I want to welcome you just in front of the uh, entrance door. Here we go. Welcome to my home. And uh, so fast quiz time. Yeah, so could you please watch this video? Okay, so now I'd like to show you our house. But before that, I also have one more question. So when you have a chance to visit Japanese house, how the guests can enter the room. Number one, just directly with the shoes. Number two, you 
take off shoes. Number three. My son is singing. Sorry, number three. Just like this, you can line up shoes. What do you think? Yeah. So I'm going to show you more. Yeah, we have here some number three, some number one, some number two. Everyone is on the side. Number、yes. three. Who is right, Samil? Yeah, so sorry, it's a little bit so three questions. So I think both is、uh, okay. So number three, and so of course, so it's number two. So two and three. Yeah, because so actually, so who I also I love traveling. And when I visit、uh, my friend's house in、uh, overseas country, sometimes I have a shoe issue. Where can I get those shoes? Where can where can I put the shoes? But in Japan, it's very easy. So always at the entrance, you have to take off the shoes and line up shoes. So, so this is so just for ryokan, Japanese hotel. So can I see this is all. Traditional Japanese shoes. It's just、mm -hmm. always like yeah.、So、you、nice. can see. Can you guys see、yeah. on the right are the shoes lined, and on the left is our entrance. So Japanese yeah. always line the shoes. You know, like organized. <laughs> yeah, yes. I saw it. Well, I saw it when I went to Onsen. It's like、mm -hmm. a style spa. So we had、mm -hmm. to change to these shoes. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that's just kind of Japanese manner. I think. Yeah. Okay, so now, so、uh, so today, so you can learn about maybe Japanese diet, and、uh, so Japanese was known for people living longer and healthier. I think that's true. So actually, my mother, she's now seventy-seven, but she has a lot of energy, and always she love hiking or she love social dances. I think, I think she has much energy than me. <laughs> and also, my mother-in-law, she's seventy-six years old now, but also she's a very active lady, and she loves haiku. Haiku means Japanese poet. So always, so she's a teacher, teacher of the、uh, haiku. So、uh, also, she has a very enjoy her socialize, you know,、uh, world. Yeah, yeah. So I think、uh, the key of that is food. Yeah, Japanese food. So I'd like to share so some tips for Japanese diet. Yeah, food life is your okay. So mainly, so I'd like to share the mainly three tips. Okay. So first one. So always when、uh, I eat, always I keep it in my mind. This phrase. So eat only until eighty percent full. So this is kanji, so Chinese, Japanese Chinese character, and that means stomach eighty percent, stomach eighty percent. So I don't want to eat too much or even one hundred percent. It's too much for me because I've heard that so twenty、um, minutes after eating, so your brain feel satisfied. So even that's only eighty percent, it's okay. Twenty minutes after twenty minutes. Yeah, twenty minutes after eating, so your brain feels satisfied. Yeah, so, so just actually, so I'm a middle-aged woman, but sometimes I have to be careful too much eating. So I think the key is the dish size of the dish. So bowl or dishes. So、uh, in Japan, so、uh, we have a lot of small dish like this. We call this kind of dish mame zara. Means mame means beans. Mame means dish. Ah,、uh, mame means beans, and dara means dish. So dish like beans, like small sizes. So yeah. So always, so I care about it, and I use this kind of dish. Yes. Yeah. And、uh, also, so second tips. So that is this one. So um, so this Chinese character means. Local production for local consumption. Yeah. So in Japan, so when、uh, you go to the fruit market or even the supermarket, it's easy to understand. So those food come from where. 
For example, this is so fruits and vegetable market, and this is strawberries. And and uh, spring time, the Japanese strawberries it's very very juicy and tasty. I highly recommend it. And so for this sign, so that means Hyogo Prefecture Ichigo means strawberry. So in Japan, we have 46 prefectures and Kobe, so my hometown Kobe, that is in Hyogo Prefecture. So that means this is local strawberry. And the next one, so this strawberry come from Kagawa Prefecture. So Kagawa is in Shikoku Island. So this is so Shikoku Island. Uh, from Shikoku Island, strawberries. And the import foods, it's the same. So for example, so this is kiwi. And the kiwi come from New Zealand. So New Zealand means from New Zealand. Or this pineapple come from, so maybe so you have, it's difficult to see it, but it's doll and come from America. So maybe from Hawaii Island or something. And so, so as much as possible, I want to so eat, eat local food. I think that's the healthy way. Yeah. And the last one, so hang on just a moment, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so last one, so uh, this is so mago wa yasashii ideas. So mago wa yasashi, it's directly Japanese translation. Uh, yeah, so is mago wa yasashi is grand children are kind. But the meaning is totally not important. But the important thing is that initial. For example, ma means in Japanese mame means beans. So beans or go is goma or sesame. Or well, this initial, so seven chips. This is very important. So now, actually now I'm here, it's my small kitchen and just my fridge is just over here. So this is so just a typical Japanese kitchen. So this one, so this is our oven and the microwave. It's the same, so same machine. So oven and the microwave and uh, all, I think almost Japanese family have a rice cooker. Chinese like family too. Yeah, 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 it's, we need it. It's essential. <laughs> yes. And also, so now I'd like to show you the fridge. Hang on. Jan, jan, jan. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe it's so It's same much more you. organized than mine. I, I feel very ashamed to see Sumili's fridge. It's so organized. No, yeah, I just clean up, of course. Yes. <laughs> so actually, so some part it's uh, same as you. So here is attention, so egg egg corner, and uh, next to egg corner around here. So this is so my or uh, my family's kuchi samishi corner. So kuchi means mouse, and uh, samishi means feeling lonely. That means I'm not so hungry, but my mouse feel lonely. So sometimes, don't you have such a time? Yeah, so, okay, so <laughs> thank you so uh, Thank you so much, you yeah, agree with me, yeah? My so, mom is actually, hungry all the time. <laughs> yes, me too, actually. But so, hope my Kuchisamishi corner, so I have chocolate, but I don't like so too much white sugar thing. So not only chocolate, but uh, I love cheese. I think so cheese is good for calcium for my aging. So this is a smoked cheese. Small, it's tiny, yeah, but smoked cheese or uh, sliced cheese or so this is not so sweet. So this is, we, say, we call stembe. It's a rice cracker with beans, oh, rice nice. cracker with beans or something like that, yeah. And also just this small corner, I'll show you some things. So this is a very tiny, tiny sauce, just like this. Mm -hmm. So here is, so my mottai nai corner. And mottai nai, that is also kind of a special Japanese feeling. Also, so just my ages, so middle-aged woman often say, this is mottai nai, or mottai nai, blah, blah. And mottai nai means I feel guilty. Uh, when I throw away something or I waste uh, something food. So, mm -hmm. for example, sometimes when I take away bento box, bento means lunch box, I have uh, something extra sauce like this, but uh, we don't want to throw away, just I keep it. 
<laughs> and I want to use it for next chance. That is a more tiny feeling. Okay. Yeah. And um, also, so I'd like to so share something food with you. Hang on. And uh, also, so here, so actually, my friend, we ha we have one, two, three, three part. And uh, so here's the top ones, and uh, this is so just the fruits and the vegetable corner. And later, so I'd like to so share some food. Hang on, just a moment, please. And uh, here is the fridge. And uh, I think so. Con uh, how do you say? Comparing of uh, other countries' fridge, I think it's quite small because mm -hmm. uh, I like so small. Uh, I like so fresh foods, so fridge is not so big. But uh, now, so actually now, uh, my family is addicting this ice cream. This ice cream, it's azuki, means red beans ice cream. But <laughs> for some people, oh uh, yes, so because some pe uh, in, I've heard in some countries, so beans is no sweet, sweet beans, it's kind of, kind of uh, yes. Yeah. But in Japan, we often eat uh, red beans as a sweet. Uh -huh. So we have red beans jam or red beans, even red beans ice cream. Uh, for so us too, we yeah. have red bean paste. It's like sweet. Yeah. The sweet. Yeah. In China, do you have ice cream like this? Red beans ice cream. Uh, Yvon. <laughs> okay, and sir, my friend in Shanghai, she, she nods. She said yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's Yvonne-san. Yes. Yeah. Hello. 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 Do you have red beans ice cream? Yes, we have. Yes, we also have. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you. So, Mili, can I ask you a question? Uh, uh, Sandra yeah. asked, can you show again that uh, page with the, the, the ingredients? I know you're going to show one by one. But she just mm -hmm. wants to speak quickly again. Yeah. So actually, so now, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for interesting. So I'll show you this one, and uh, so with uh, each, yeah, each food, each food. Yeah, okay. She's going to show you, Sandra. She's going to show each one of those. Yes. So okay. So ma is the mame means beans, and the go is goma means sesame, and uh, wa is wakame means she with i'll show you later yeah she with and uh, ya is yasai means vegetables and uh, sa is sakana is a fish and uh, she is like shiitake means mushrooms and the last one is also quiz time so you can wait for last one yeah and also if you like so uh, minji so we can send uh, all people later, so we have a good illustration of this food. And yes. tell me, tell me, Chan made a very good illustration, right? Yeah, so we can share uh, mm. that uh, photos later. Yeah, it's okay. handmade from tell me. Yeah, arigato. Can I also make a comment? Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I, I'm very impressed in your fridge, you don't have a lot of canned food. Like ah. put in cans and paper box, like preserved food. Mm -hmm. I wonder how often you go shopping. Is it because you always buy fresh things? That's why you don't have a lot of preserved food. Yeah, but actually, so I can say that uh, all, uh, I do grocery shopping now on the shipping or uh, with uh, just internet shopping now. Ah. Yeah, so once every Thursday, every Thursday, uh, so I, I so a lot of groceries coming to my house because you know it's uh, I don't want so I have no car uh, so uh, I don't want to carry big stuffs yes yeah but yeah so once per week and sometimes so we have very nice market in my hometown so sometimes I want to go just to the local market mm -hmm. and I have someone something yes. yeah. Because for, for yeah. us, we go shopping once a week. So mm -hmm. our shopping day is on Thursday. Every Thursday, uh, our fridge is full. It's like uh, very rich fridge. By the uh, end yeah. of the week, 
our fridge is like after second world war we have nothing in the fridge <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes so you have to think about it yeah so it's same yeah so actually in my brain always my brain about 10 percent it's about the grocery shopping or what i have to buy or what they thought of or it's same yes also with two children Yes, yes, so sometimes it's quite difficult. Mm. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, if, so actually, so this is a very interactive, you know, experience. So if you have any questions or you have something mysterious things about Japanese food or Japanese life, you can ask me anything. So, Juliano, do you have anything? I have one. Yes, mm -hmm. I have one. So, uh, I saw that in this, you showed the, you showed the slide. Mago mm -hmm. wa sashi, and there is no meat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. that's a very good question. Actually, why? Because, so, actually, so 150 years ago, Japan was Edo period. And right. until Edo period, uh, so Japanese has, uh, don't eat meat. Because we were, even now, but we were Buddhists. And the Bud Japanese Buddhism idea, so eating meat is not so good, right? Yeah, right. and uh, yeah, so and uh, also, so just uh, uh, during the Edo period, uh, Japanese government policy was cro uh, cross the country or isolated country, we say, okay. and we did trade only Chinese and uh, Dutch people. and. Uh, so we had no connection with foreigners, right. okay? And after that, so uh, 1853, so American black ship and the captain, Mr. Perry, come to uh, Japan and uh, they, oh, demand, uh, they just uh, demand uh, open for everyone, open for okay. all countries, that's America, you know? Then, so Japanese government so opened a new five port for international people. And then after that, a lot of international food culture come to Japan. And first, Western people started to eat uh, meat, especially beef. So, and the Kobe, Kobe beef, do you know Kobe beef is yeah. quite yeah. Yeah. Of yeah, it's very famous. Also very famous. Yeah, very famous. Uh, yeah. Because it's not the local Kobe people not start, uh, started to eat beef. But the Western people first started eat Kobe beef and they have a good reputation. Kobe beef is very good. Yeah. And before that, so for us or for Japanese, a cow is like a friend or like a dog. And we have no okay. idea to eat, you know, co-workers or beef. But okay. looks Kobe beef steak and it looks delicious. Then they just started to eat that meat and they anymore. <laughs> you know, so it's eating delicious. <laughs> we noticed that. <laughs> okay. so, but, and now, so actually, so this is last week, uh, uh, you know, supermarket advertisement. And uh, so now, actually, meat is more popular than fish because the price, because of the price, I think. Now, uh, it, the fish is getting uh, expensive. Ne, tell me, Chan. Yes? yes? Yes. So, and the meat is uh, not so expensive, especially uh, import beef. I mean, American or OG beef. It's much cheaper than Japanese beef. So, we have our very, uh, you know, good beef, import beef, just like this. Okay. Very good answer. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, no question? It's okay. But I, for me, so I love meat, of course. But as there much is, as possible, I want to eat seafood too. Yes, Sayori. Yeah, there is one question, but I will, I will, I will, I will do it at the end of the presentation because it has a relationship what you're talking at the end. But you All can, right. you can, uh, you can show everything now. Yeah. Arigato, arigato. Okay, so now, so I'd like to explain about the mago wa yasashi. So ma means so beans. So actually. Uh, for example, tofu. Tofu is made from soybeans. It's very super healthy food and low calorie, but a lot of protein. So we love it. But also not only tofu, but this is very, very important paste for us. But uh, uh, we call it miso paste. So uh, anyone uh, you drank the miso soup, drink miso soup. We, so I love miso soup. So we use this kind of so miso uh, paste. So actually, so every year, sorry, I 
uh, made from scratch. So I made a miso paste. Right? So with uh, so with soybeans. Yep. So miso paste. And uh, okay. So this is so my beans. And the go means so I told you so sesame. So I use sesame for topping or a lot of things. But also so this is sesame dressing. Sesame dressing is very, very popular in Japan. So of course it's salada or we use it for shabu shabu. So shabu shabu is a very popular Japanese food. It means boiled pork. Yes. So it's boiled pork with sesame sauce. It's very, very yeah, popular food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go. And wa means seaweed. So actually, so uh, maybe so Japan, Korean, and maybe Chinese too. So we Asian, East Asian people eat uh, seaweed. For example, this is nori. Yes, uh, Minji, you have it. <laughs> so nori, so this is just uh, with uh, uh, this, uh, onigiri or uh, onigiri means rice bowl or uh, sushi. So rolled sushi, we use it. So this is so very low calorie. Uh, seaweed is very low calorie, but a lot of umami taste. So have you ever heard of this word, umami? So yes. umami, that is yes. a Japanese word. Yes, so he sense yes. of so yes, right? Minji is asking if it's because of cl climate, uh, Sumili. Is that because Pardon? of the climate? Create, yes, exactly. So actually, so my hometown, so Shioya, it's, uh, we have the small port and the harbor and they have a nori farm. So in that time, we have a, a nori uh, seaweed farm and also factory too. It's very taste, very fresh and taste. And also not only nori, but also this is a special seaweed called, uh, so Instagram people said uh, just like this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so yeah, like this. So uh, we call this kombu. So kombu, this is dried kombu. So we don't eat, we, we don't eat directly, but we use it for soup stock, okay? Soup stock. Uh, I'll show you later. And uh, this is so seaweed. Uh, seaweed. And uh, uh, next one, yeah, means vegetable. So of course, so for everyone, so vegetable is important. But also, so in Japan, seasonal fruits or vegetable. This is very important. We call it shun, means seasonal vegetable. Because we have four seasons. Yeah, four seasons. So uh, you know, so now it's autumn, it's autumn and fall. So uh, now sweet potato or kaki uh, is very, very uh, important for this season. So uh, yeah, so in your country, do you have kaki? It's parchment. It's now it's very, very sweet and it's very tasty. And also, have you ever seen this tiny pumpkin? This is a very tiny pumpkin, you know? Yeah, so kabocha, we say pumpkin, it's very, very tasty. And uh, also, this is so nashi means Japanese pear. So, so Japanese pear is very round, but it's very juicy and tasty. Yeah, just like this. Yeah, and uh, so sa means sakana means she, seafood. So of course, so Japanese seafood, it's very, very uh, uh, important. We often eat, uh, or my family often eat uh, fish, but not only fresh seafood, but this is, so dried, dried bonito fish. So we use it for soup stock, mm. for soup stock. So actually, so when you uh, eat or you drink the miso soup, so the, that taste is uh, often, so this dried bonito and kombu, this is seaweed. But after making a soup, we reduce it from soup stock. So we, you never seen this, uh, you know, material or ingredients, but uh, the taste is absolutely this kombu, kombu, seaweed, and uh, this dried bonito, uh, shaved dried bonito. Yes. Yeah. So this is very important. Okay, and uh, ta and she means shiitake or mushrooms. So in Japan, we have a lot of mushrooms, and also autumn or fall season, it's very, very taste. So we call this one shiitake. It's also good to umami taste and uh, good smell. This one, shiitake. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, last one, so I told you, so this seven tips, last one. 
what do you think? So last one, ima go wa yasashi i. So from i, this is so Japanese initial, but what is the last tips? Yes, so write, write in the chat, write in the chat, what do you think is the last ingredient, you know? Terumi cannot say because Terumi knows. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Definitely ice cream. Ice cream. Rice. Rice. Uh, rice. Yeah. rice. <laughs> okay, some yeah. people say rice, ice cream, both. <laughs> some say rice. Permanent foods. Imagination. No one. Rice. Everyone's saying rice. <laughs> yeah, but rice is too much important, so no list. I we have no idea. <laughs> but rice, guys, I have to say that rice is not even in that list. Rice is already in all Japanese table. <laughs> yeah, rice is like water. You have to have it every day. Exactly. Yeah, okay, rice sake. and, and sake. tea and ocha. Rice and ocha. Sake. Rice. Sake. No, oh, sake. Rice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So, anyone, anyone, guys, right? Someone said egg. Someone said milk. Someone said yeah. soy sauce. Someone said yeah. sake. Anyone got rice? And uh, yeah, so the hint is, uh, I think it might be vegetables. It might be vegetables. I thought it was kind of vegetables. But so, what is the secret last ingredient, Sumili? Hi, potato. Yes, yeah, so potato, uh -huh. <laughs> right? But also we eat normal vegetable. But also this is potato foods in Japan. We call it konyak, and maybe in even in China you don't have this one konyak. It's uh, it's potato jelly. We made it from special potato. It's konyak imo, and it's low calorie and the texture. It's just like jelly. But we use it for potofu or miso soup or yeah, a lot of ways. So this is a very, very important food for us. So yeah. are they native from Japan, potato? Or do you always yeah, have- Yeah, native potato. I think, tell me, what do you think? Konnyaku imu is a native Japanese potato, right? I never saw uh, yeah, that. I think, yeah, konnyaku potato. Yeah, it is- uh, made from cognac starch. Yeah, cognac starch. It has a lot of fibers. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's good for digestion. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Terumi. Yes. So, okay, so, uh, so this, so, uh, ma go wa yasashi. So this is very, very uh, important. So uh, actually later, uh, so also you can, see it also from the illustrator and I hope it's useful for your life yeah and but of course so actually so our you know food culture is of course different because uh, so we say the best uh, diet is uh, so you have to learn from your grandma grandmother so actually so the our DNA is quite different so maybe for you so meat your high calorie things it's very important so it depends on the area, uh, I think. But uh, I think so. Some tips is uh, uh, useful for you. Okay, yeah. And uh, so, what do you think, Sayuri? So, if uh, we have our time, we can make uh, onigiri. But uh, also, yes, do you have yes, it? yes. Do you if you, I do, you have it there because I did my, I did my miso soup. Uh, I just want to quickly share you a little bit yes. my experience that I had in Japan. So mm -hmm. as uh, Sumili said, this is a hyoka. Yes. Can you see the picture? Yes. And this is the breakfast. Mm. So when I was in Japan, like in a hyoka, we were like surprised about the breakfast because let me show you the difference. And someone asked what children eat in Japan, um, um, Jose. And I have to say that children eat um, just like adults, that's what I check it in Japan. I don't know, I think Sumili and Terumi can say, but I was very afraid. Like my father, when he was very um, um, lazy to cook for us, he would give us the tamago rice, you know, like yeah. just rice with eggs. Yes, with some, some soy sauce. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what my dad gave to us. And we were kids. We would eat, eat that because my dad didn't want to cook. So that's what we did. And uh, what's the name of the beans? Um, I forgot natto. about that. What's the natto. natto. So children yes. also eat natto that I saw in Japan. And yeah. I was very surprised how kids would eat natto. I don't like natto and they like it. It's very yeah, adult. So, yeah, can I say that, Sayori? So actually, I've heard that too. So egg rice, raw egg with rice. So for some Koreans, it's very weird or they yeah. don't want to see it because so no one eat egg just as a raw egg. But in Japan, yeah. so we can say that the, our eggs is very, very fresh. So yeah, and I've heard so that's why we eat it. And actually, I'm also lazy mom. So sometimes for the weekend <laughs> breakfast, I, I'm not a morning person. So I tell uh, my kids so okay so you can eat rice <laughs> yes it's very good and i have to say look at the difference of a brazilian breakfast that's what i want to show you in the screen that's a brazilian breakfast can you see so we have bread cheese and now uh, i'm going to show you like a, i have a second screen here i don't know if you can see my second screen so this is my breakfast table like with yogurt um fruits, we had cheese, we had bread. So when I was in Japan, I was very amazed at how Japanese diet is different from our own diet here. And now we are going to show you how can you easily, like I don't cook, but I do Japanese food. You just need to have some basic things in your house, like tofu, like you have to have tofu. If you have tofu, if you have goha, if you have rice, can you see rice? Mm -hmm. If you have nori, oh, let me take this uh, background now. Uh, I, I, I can show you my nori. Yeah. Nori. And if you have this little season that everyone can have, like in every supermarket you can find, like onigiri, like uh, what do you call this to do the onigiri? The furikake. Um, Purikake. Yeah, purikake. Purikake. Yeah. and if you have hondashi mm -hmm. and miso you do uh you do japanese food that's how i survive i don't know how to cook but i can make japanese food very easily and uh we talked with Sumili that if we had time she would teach how to do like onigiri that is basically rice and you can put anything stuffing inside you can put chicken you can put salmon you can put like eggs right Sumili? i think onigiri I don't know if Terumi agrees with me, but I think onigiri and miso soup are the two very easy things to do. And uh, in all Japanese house, you have it, right? In the morning, like when I was in Japan, we would eat every morning miso soup. And I had miso soup here also from yesterday to eat. So Sumiri would like to show us how to do an onigiri. And uh, we have here some questions too, like uh, Jose asked what kids eat in Japan. Can you, can you? So actually, so in Japan, Japanese uh, need favorite food. That's number one. Guess what? It's uh, you don't think it's Japanese food, but it's curry, curry rice. So actually, so do uh, someone remember tell me presented Japanese curry? But mm -hmm. Japanese curry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Minji has it. This is a very good glue or soup curry soup stock. Yeah, but this is very very popular for Japanese kids. Yes, and yeah. also, uh, you know, onigiri rice bowl is quite popular. And uh, so, first step for children to cook that is onigiri. Yeah. yeah so, can and, uh, I show you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, show. Sure. And uh, uh, Lilian and Andre, they are uh, also commenting that strong fish is always a bit tough for breakfast in Japan, and it's true. Like you eat yeah, fish at breakfast, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, we have a baby, sa baby sardine. It's a very tiny, tiny fish, but it's very common for breakfast. Mm. Or Do you eat with rice? Do you eat with yes, rice? With rice with yeah. I have to say that because we are half Japanese and I was in Japan with my aunt, that she's, she's a Nisei. For us, it was okay to have a Japanese breakfast, but I can see that lots of people from, you know, known Japanese country, when they go to the breakfast, especially in Nahiyoka, like, in hotels, like you can find regular breakfast, but in a hyoka, it's a typical Japanese breakfast. For me, it was the most amazing thing. And I said, wow, this is like, this is very different from us, you know, because we have mm -hmm. egg, cheese, 
it's very difficult to find cheese in Japan. That was, a, I got very surprised with that. Yeah, so very, so some people don't like very fishy smell, yeah? Very fishy, yes. Yeah, and also some people said they don't want to watch eye. When they watch fish eye, so eye to eye, they don't like it. Yes. So, yeah. you know, when I was a kid, my mom always asked me to eat fish eye because for our convention, you, if you eat eyes, it's good for your eyes. If you mm -hmm. eat the legs, it's good for your legs. My <laughs> eyes are <laughs> not very good. So every <laughs> week, my mom would ask me yeah, to eat sure. fish eye. It didn't work very well, as you can ah. see. <laughs> Yeah, I think so I tell you guys, yeah, like, so, so maybe before you start doing, you can start doing onigiri. Can you guys, like, just do a big smile for a picture? Can we do like uh, a yeah. big? Okay, so just one minute. Uh, yeah, so this is so just our rice bowl. And it's easy, and if you feel hungry, so yeah. uh, I really recommend you to uh, make the rice bowl because it's good for health, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. all right, because no sugar. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is rice. And just like this, so you can just shake, shake the, you know, with the rice bowl. So then it's getting like a bowl, it's like getting a bowl, okay? And so after that, so using the saran wrap, can I say saran wrap? It's not saran wrap, but anyway, saran wrap. So yeah, okay, and then, okay so then because, uh, so it's, uh, we don't want to touch with the fan, hand, okay? So just like this, we do, it's just like a baseball, like baseball, baseball size. We just, uh, can I say round, 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 like this. And oh my God, I forgot to use the uh, topping. So we also actually, so some Asian market, you can find this kind of furikake. Ah, Minji, you oh, have, you have. Yeah. yeah, it's them. So this is shiso, means Japanese herb. It's very, Good taste. How, how can I explain this uh, taste, Minji? Salty? <laughs> or maybe like hard? Sour and salty. So it's like a yeah. rice condiment. Rice condiment. Yes. And uh, so just uh, before I'm making a bowl, uh, sorry, I forgot, but uh, you can so do this topping. Okay? And round, round, round. And uh, voila. So just uh, only 30 seconds. So if you, ha you have nori, so just round with nori so that's and uh, so the, really, uh, the nori that you use is this one is the one that is seasonal it's a it's a regular yes, yes, yes. Oh, so we have nori with salty nori and non-salty nori both is okay both is yeah. okay because and i like uh, to use this one because i think it tastes better you know like when you guys buy nori you have like regular nori with no mm -hmm. taste and have like like salty right more salty nori. yes yes Salty is uh, tasty, I think. Tell me. Yeah, but both are tasty. Yeah, you, yeah, you told me <laughs> that the salty nori called teriyaki seaweed. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah also you told me tasty. that. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so this is so our rice bowl. So catch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jose that asked like the children that I, because I, I was taking care of kids in Japan and basically for the snack, when we were like, you know, away, like in a park for the snack, the mother would make onigiris. They had everyday onigiris for like snacks, right? Like, yeah, like so it's easy. Yeah. Very easy. Yeah. So very handy. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So anyone, mm. anyone has any other questions? Uh, Minja, are you going to talk about next week? Please or oh uh, yes so maybe before uh, after everybody has a question uh, then I will yes. I will announce next week yeah so if, if you're thinking you you have something mystery first food, I can explain about yes this. so yes yeah, so uh, anyone has any question I think I I I think I I I asked all the questions that were in the chat. Anyone else has one? Yes, I do. The eye of the fish from that in the lamb. Do you drink amasake? Amasake. Amasake. Ah, yes. Yes. So actually, so I love amasake, but my daily life I don't eat uh, amasake. But uh, it's very good energy food. Uh, we yeah. So tell me, I think so. Tell me, yeah. she is very good uh, specialist. Actually, food. three days ago, I made amasake. 
And I, it was the first time for me to drink amazake, but it really works. It's good for digestion and uh, redu reduce my fatigue and uh, what else? And increase the immune, immune? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. What do you think about amazake? What's, yeah, what it was tasty. Is it tea? It's, like, it's a drink with rice, right? It's made with rice, right? Oh, okay. I'm made with uh, rice, uh, ri rice koji. Koji yeah. is uh, for ingredient for making, how to say, miso. Mm. The fermented miso. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we just mix the hot water and koji to mm -hmm. make amazake. But it was really good. Yep. Yes. What is the secret to Japanese skin? <laughs> ah, Japanese I am the last skin? class. Yes, <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 so actually I am the last person to explain about it. But uh, yeah, a lot of Japanese uh, women uh, good skin because they are really afraid of the sunburn that's true yeah. so sometimes in the summertime it's really weird they have of course mask even before the COVID-19 masks and the sunglasses <laughs> and the curve it's very really weird maybe China it's same right they are really afraid of the sunburn it's totally different with western people so the secret yeah. is mask put it on your mask, mask. mask. Yeah, that's true. and uh Lila is also asking which meal is the most important meal in Japan breakfast lunch and dinner which mm -hmm. one is important? Yeah, so I've heard that uh, in Brazil we have a big breakfast. It's always yeah. breakfast. So we say that the uh, uh, golden time is breakfast. But I really embraced embarrassed to say about it because I'm really night person. So after ten o'clock I'm really energy, but the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So many of my children. So always rice and yeah, rice and egg, <laughs> very simple one. But yeah, some some good mom is so they have a very awesome breakfast. I mean rice, miso yeah. soup and fish and uh, or bread, eggs, sausage, salad or blah blah. Yeah, so I really have to yeah. copy. <laughs> and I and I have to say that I'm very happy to host or co-host this uh, quiz because as I was mentioned when we were like planning, you know, I think everything starts what you buy to take to your home. So, you know, like if you're in a diet, it doesn't make any sense that you buy like, you know, like lots of sweets, you know, mm -hmm. and lots of uh, carbo, mm -hmm. you know. So I was very amazed in Japan how, and uh, that's what, exactly what Sumili said, like, uh, when I was in Okinawa, the family that I live in Okinawa, they went to the supermarket every day, every day. And I said, what are they doing? And mm -hmm. after with them, I understood. And she said to me, Sayuri, we like fresh food. Mm. So it's okay if we go every day to the supermarket and the fridge don't have a bunch of food like we have here. They have exactly what they need. And every day and every week, they buy what they need. And they think they were like this in Okinawa. They would say, what are we going to do to eat? So they said, oh, we are going to do, I don't know, uh, sukiyaki, whatever. So they would go to the market and they would buy what they need and they would cook. So they would always have fresh food. And I think um, mm -hmm. it's important at this time that we think about being healthy. It doesn't mean that you cannot have an ice cream in the fridge, right? So we really have ice cream in the fridge. It's just that we have to balance our eating. And I think we have lots to learn with Asian diet, not just Japanese, but Asian diets in general, they're very healthy, very fresh, and exactly the same. Like they eat all the time, but they eat very small amounts. Like Sumili, if you went to Rome, you come to Brazil, you are going like, tell Giuliano, if you say a feijoada. <laughs> yeah, whenever I go abroad, <laughs> I gain uh, so much weight, about 10 kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> because we eat big amount of food so but we have lots of that so i would like to say thank you um Mij is going to close the session like with some um things to say but i would like to say thank you everyone who you know chat and ask questions and make this quiz to be very nice for the new ones that come every week we have a quiz so if you follow us you can come here 
and uh, enjoy our quiz. We make it as fun as possible. We make it as good as possible. And uh, we just want to have a good time. You know, uh, uh, this is started with pandemic, but I think this is going to go on as a very long and nice friendship. So I would just like to say thank you, everyone. I'm very honored to be with Japanese, you know, and for what I uh, say very, very thank you. Like, clap your hands. Let's do the clap your hands and say thank you. And Amiji is going to close the session, okay? Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sumili and uh, Sayuri. Uh, the two of you work so well to present us uh, uh, the fridge and a healthy lifestyle. Uh, we, as Sayuri mentioned, we started this weekly quiz because of lockdown. Uh, we were so bored that we want to do something fun to learn a new culture every week. But uh, it lasted. Uh, I'm very glad we outrun the virus. In September, we did a survey asking people, what do you enjoy about this weekly event? A lot of people mentioned they like to meet new people and be, to enjoy the good mood of our weekly event. That's why next Sunday, uh, we will do something quite special. Before, we always have the one host or two co-hosts, but everybody has a very interesting story to tell. Every day is very unique in terms of the food you eat, the food in your fridge, the newspaper you read, and how you interpret the concept and a, and a word. So uh, next week, we will do something like an October Grand Challenge to welcome our October. We will be developed, div divided into different breakout rooms where we actually need to collaborate on certain tasks. Uh, these tasks are still, uh, at the moment, secret missions, but the key is we want to use this opportunity to let everybody share a little piece of your culture, your story, the food you eat, the newspaper you read. So uh, please stay tuned for our uh, email for what's gonna come next week. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a good morning Good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Bye. Bye. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a beautiful Sunday. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. bye bye. It takes forever to say bye on Zoom. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> bye. Let's see who's the last one. Who's the last one? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Bye, good to see you, Paul, Gary, and Ling Dali. Is that? Hi, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, very nice meeting you guys. Bye. Bye.